Welcome back to Falcons Franchise. Week 11 is our bye week. We're 8-2, and two, and we've had a couple of really close games, and we just keep coming out on top. Exactly what you want to have happen. As predicted, the Panthers played us closer, at least it felt like it, than the 49ers did, but we pulled away and got the win. Week 11, bit of a break. We got our bye week, and we'll start with the prospect spotlight before taking a look at three different prospects that I think look pretty good. So, the assistant GM, who is an idiot, fumbling fool, wants to take a deeper look at strong safety Carlos Russell. Apparently, he's been standing out in terms of football IQ. So, you know what? We'll take a look at strong safety Carlos Russell and see if there's anything worth actually looking at. Now, when you look at our team, strong safety is not a position that immediately jumps out as a big need. We have Jesse Bates at free safety, Javon Holland at strong safety. Safety is pretty much fine. However, I'll take a look, right? Carlos Russell is six foot, 218 pounds from UCLA. Does have a hit power. I like that. C-man coverage is fine. A to C tackle could be fine. Zone coverage at best is a C. I don't like that. He's 23 years old, 218 pounds. So not really like a linebacker. Does have great to elite acceleration. Speed is only decent to solid. And then strength is great to elite. So you're looking at like a hybrid linebacker here. Does have a block shedding a play wreck, a catching. I'm not going to say that there's nothing here, but he definitely doesn't look outstanding. If zone coverage ends up being a C, and if he ends up reaching the top of his potential thresholds there for like, instead of just decent speed, maybe it's solid. Maybe he has like 88 speed. That's workable. A little bit undersized, but if block shot at an A is like even close to a 70, which I'm not sure what it is for safeties. Maybe he's a money backer type player. Maybe. Maybe. So, I'm not sure that the assistant GM is not an idiot, but he might be. Tony Roach, for my money, looks better. Only C block shitting, though, compared to an A. That is a big difference, but we know he has better man coverage. Zone coverage could be the same. Tackling, who knows? Just a better athlete, I guess. Two pounds heavier, but not a big difference however the three players i really do want to take a look at look quite good to start we'll go with matthew callahan from our state of georgia here as the atlanta falcons physical player who delivers bone crushing hits and you're going to see that here in a minute struggles to find the ball in the air whatever he's an edge rusher i don't care has a motor that runs through the whistle high motor trait often looks to rip the ball from runner strip ball trait shows good discipline and won't get flagged much has a spin move, has a counter move, has a swift arm over move, the swim move in his arsenal, and will utilize power and leverage to bowl through pass protectors. That's the bull rush trait. So, has every trait you could want. And then, you look at him physically, and he looks very good. Great to elite acceleration. And keep in mind, this is being compared against also off-ball linebackers. So, he's not expected to be as explosive as those guys, yet... Here he is. Well, in real life, maybe so, but not in the game, typically. Has great to elite speed. Good to great strength. Even if it just ends up being great speed and acceleration, that's still amazing. For a guy that you'd hope has A finesse moves, although it might be a B. B hit power, A pursuit. Block shedding, we don't know quite about just yet. But overall, Matthew Callahan looks very good. And we do have Arnold Ebicady. We drafted Deion Dobbins. But if we were moved to a 3-4, if we were to move to a 3-4, we have a bunch of good linebackers. However, if Matthew Callahan is a game-breaking edge rusher, he and Arnold Ebicady can go off the edge. Deion Dobbins can be a base defensive end when those guys are playing outside linebacker. And then Deion Dobbins can even be a rush defensive tackle if we wanted to do that. He's about 270 pounds, right? So he could be a rush D tackle on clear pass rush down. So Matthew Callahan's a guy to look out for, as is an interior player. And we do have solid pieces there. I like Johnny Hamilton, but Ezekiel Pleasant from Stanford could be a better pass rusher. 6'4", 296. Of course, teammate of Trent Jackson, who we drafted in this pass draft. And Ezekiel Pleasant is a physical player who delivers bone crushing hits. He loves to utilize a spin as a counter move. Has a swift arm over move in his arsenal. We utilize power and leverage to bowl through pass protectors. Has a motor that runs through the whistle. Often looks to rip the ball from runners. Shows good discipline and won't get flagged much. And then physically, he's got great to elite acceleration, great to elite agility, 
Good to great change of direction, good to great jumping, great to elite speed, and great to elite strength. He looks very good. You look at his core attributes. It's A for awareness, play rec, power moves, finesse moves, stamina, tackle. Hit power is at least a B. Pursuit's a B, block shed's a B. He looks amazing. Definitely a player we would consider, even with talent at defensive tackle already. And I also like Deion Watkins from Ohio State. A player built a little bit more like Deion Dobbins, who we drafted last year from LSU. However, not as well balanced as a pass rusher. He's more of just a finesse guy. But at 270 pounds, it's interesting. Also delivers bone crushing hits, has that spin move, has the swim move, has uh, the bull rush trait, has a high motor, strip ball trait, shows good discipline and won't get flagged much. And then key rating, C block shed, A finesse moves, only D power moves, but it doesn't matter too much. And then A tackling. Physically, also amazing. Great to elite acceleration, change of direction, jumping, and speed. Strength is only solid to good. And he has A tackle. A awareness, B play rec, as I've mentioned for some of these already. Only C pursuit, but man, he looks like a really, really good player from Ohio State. We could just look to double down on pass rush. Maybe even the, the grandson of Sammy Baugh, Carson Baugh. Fun storyline to go with there. We already have some of these players fully scouted for having defensive end as our position that we looked at. A lot of round one to two guys. But that doesn't mean that they're not worth drafting. Byron Ashley from Clemson has A power moves, A tackle. Also seems to be a pretty good athlete. Could be something we consider. You know, I'm looking at everything. I'm not going to, you know, lock into one thing or another. Larry Logan is around one to two talent that could be available in the third round. So right end looks pretty good. And left end, not quite as good. We don't know about Deion Watkins for true talent. I would probably put it at round one to two, looking at everybody else. But at defensive tackle, Ezekiel Pleasant looks amazing. Jeremiah McPhee from Georgia also looks pretty good. And then the outside linebacker, Matthew Callahan, top five projection. I think he's probably a top five talent. We're going to find out for sure because we're going to make those three players that we keyed in on our focus players to increase their scouting percentage and find out just how good they actually are. Matthew Callahan, we can't quite get up to 100%, but he's not going to be too far away. Pleasant, I expect to be a top five player in this class. Should be a tough decision for us. And then Deion Watkins. I'm not sure if it's worth looking at him. We already have him 95% scouted. So I might actually pivot here and take a look at somebody else. We could consider a corner. We could consider also, I would say, a safety just to get another DB in the mix. Ooh, interesting. Jaleel Freeman has great to elite jumping, speed, and strength, and agility. He's a physical archetype with A spectacular catch, A catching, B short route running. Jaleel Freeman looks like really good value down the board. Let's make him a focus player. Boost that percentage, Callahan and Pleasant. And that looks really good to me. Jaleel Freeman might be a steal down the board. And then how do we want to spend our bye week? I might just take the XP over the momentary gain. So let's let's stay grinding. Get the XP. We lose a bit of stamina, but we get 500 XP for the entire team. Minus 7 stamina, I don't love. But I think taking the XP for long-term development is a good idea. Like, does minus st a 7 stamina matter so much if we get upgrades for the entire team? I don't know. Definitely was 50-50 on it. But uh, you know what? A lot of season left. We got to stay grinding. Can't take our foot off the gas pedal. We're playing as well as we have. Got to keep it up. Johnny Hamilton. Got great power moves, but he's just so slow. We really need to develop him as a guy that just gets in the way and get that block shed up into the 80s. It's not too far away. Ideally, it ends up getting to the 90s but I'm not sure if we can count on that. George Espinoza, you guys care about fullback upgrades. Locking really just upgraded uh, a lot of things. Plus two to carrying, short route running, and trucking, but impact block and run block, both up by two. We don't really use a ton of fullback in our offense, but, you know, occasionally he's been on the field. Block shedding has to be the one for Dylan Stanley, no question. Temporary boost up to a 78 overall. Lock shedding by three is huge. 
Would love to get that into the 80s. You can see how good he looks already. 90 speed, 88 tackle, 85 hit power. Getting pursuit and block shut up would be a game changer for Dylan Stanley. And then Jake Meeks, still quietly developing him. Don't know his dev trait yet, but medium and deep accuracy need to go up. How about improviser? He's going to be a mobile guy. We got to increase that throw on the run. Take plus one to throw accuracy short and plus three to throw under pressure. It's not too bad. Throw under pressure now goes up to an 80. Kind of like we're the minimum of where you want that to be. We'll take a quick look at the advanced scouting. Now that we should have the percentage on Matthew Callahan up, although he is not. It chose Ezekiel Pleasant first. He is a top five talent as expected. Nothing has changed there. Still the same player I think he was, or I thought he was going to be. Looks amazing. Is he a generational player? We might have a better idea come closer to draft time. But yes, he is incredible. He could be a game-breaking interior defensive lineman. And when you look at our draft picks, we obviously expect to be pretty good. However, our first round pick is via the Detroit Lions. Currently projected at number 16. We have our first round pick next year. Of course, the first round pick in 2028. We could potentially move up if a player looked to be worth it. Daniel Jones, of course, still the Giants quarterback. Good for him. Good stuff. Deion Dobbins is tearing this drill up as soon as I say that. We're having trouble beating a blocker. This should be gold for Deion Dobbins. I'm waiting to get that, that boost, that dev trade upgrade in practice. Hasn't happened in a while, but... You know what? It's uh, it's still remaining a possibility. Just pretty rare, clearly. Quentin Drummond's kind of been breaking out recently. Got to continue to find ways to get him the football. I'd love to use him more as a rack threat. He has been winning vertically as well. He's got good speed, excellent, spectacular catch. But he should be really good after the catch as well. It's just tough in this game. I feel like receivers don't really make anybody miss with the juke move ever. And it's not like Drummond has a crazy high juke. It's in the 80s, but not especially high. But it's also not especially low. It'd be nice to make somebody miss ever. Just typically doesn't happen. You have to outrun them or you're, you know, being tackled. That's pretty much it. Ooh, and it's Monday Night Football. Falcons, Giants. Sounds like a 2023 nightmare. Could be good here a couple seasons later. Saquon's having a decent season. Already 900 yards. Almost double-digit touchdowns as well. Well, we're going to have our hands full today. However, I think there's a good chance that B. John Robinson even outplays him. Let's hope so. Daniel Jones will start for the offense Monday Night Football at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. See if Daniel Jones can play well or if we can get to him. Evan Neal starting at right tackle could be the weak link. Andrew Thomas could be a really tough matchup for Deion Dobbins. To throw quickly and not find anyone. Yeah, I think the strategy today is going to be pressure the hell out of Daniel Jones. The receiving core obviously is not great. Now, if they decide to run the ball, that could be a way that they beat us. Saquon getting up a little slowly. Seems to be okay. Isaiah Hodgins is up to superstar development. Have Paris Campbell... Wandell Robinson, but down goes Jones. Hopefully the first of many. Deshaun Humphreys brings him down for the sack. The Giants will punt. Good stop from our defense. I mean, the Giants really didn't show a whole lot that drive. It honestly looked pretty close to real Giant football. Awful. Disgusting. And nothing really happened. And we're going to start with the football on the 42-yard line. Great, great field position to start. And we'll start with play action. Throw over the linebacker, Okereke, and there's Kyle Pitts. Already taking advantage of that Giants defense and pass rush. If they're going to send a lot of players, we're going to get the football out quickly and find ways to beat them. They rushed five, and we just threw the football to, you know, maybe our best player. It's tough between Bijan and Kyle Pitts. And lately, even Neil Madsen. We throw over that? Yes, we can! Aziz Ojolari in coverage. That's who we're going to target. You drop an edge rusher back into coverage, that's your weak link if you're only going to rush four. Drake London, nice catch in traffic there. I mean, Ojolari 
He came close to making a play on the ball, but it just wasn't to be. Find Bijan out there in the flat. Yeah, we're going to dominate today. I can already tell. I can already tell. I'm going to be playing well. Maybe not running the ball, though. Third down and four. Who wants to get open? Kyle Pitts. We airmailed him. I think we're going to dominate today. We're going to settle for three. And you know what it was? We ran the football. We're a pass-heavy offense now. We got to lean into it. Instead, we go to Bijan, gain nothing. And then, I guess the pass didn't work after that, but that's not really, that's not the point, okay? Field goes up, 3 nothing. It will, at least we get some points off the turnover on downs from the Giants or, you know, forcing the punt three and out. Could have been worse, although obviously could have been a lot better. Oh, it's a read option. Somebody get to Daniel Jones. He's going to carry Deshaun Humphreys for a yard or two. Second and one. That's what we got to remember with Daniel Jones. He is a good athlete. He can take off and run. And Giants will also call design runs for him. So we can't just fully try and play Saquon Barkley. Because the quarterback is somebody that can hurt us on the ground as well. We have no safety help here. I'm kind of counting on this to be a run. Two tight ends in the game, though. It's actually play action. Exploiting man coverage. It's Paris Campbell beating AJ Terrell in a foot race. Come on. That can happen on crossers. That can happen against man coverage. That's all right. Jones under pressure. Barely gets it away. Almost sacked again. Read option again. Oh, Jones back up the middle. And I'm not diving. I promise you I didn't dive there. The CPU dove. Why are... Oh, God. Daniel Jones. Oh, rushing touchdown for the Giants. That was really annoying. Just, I... You don't have to try and stop him right there. Get back in the play. Take a better angle. You don't have to dive and go all or nothing. And he wasn't really even close. What is Jeff Okuda doing? All right. Offense might actually have to dominate. Oh, my goodness. Get rid of it. What a great throw. Neil Matson drops it. Under pressure was Trey Lance. But nearly delivered a great... I mean, I guess he did deliver a great throw. But Neil Madsen, the tight end, could not come down with the catch. Kyle Pitts. It's underthrown and it's intercepted. Under pressure forces a terrible throw. I think I spoke too soon on the dominate. Although, that's the right read. He's wide open. If it's not an awful throw, this is a huge play. How close was this Was this pressure? Uh, I get, you know, Lawrence is kind of bearing down on him. That's understandable at least, but man. Kyle Pitts couldn't have been more open. The ball was just terrible. And I guess understandably so. He was under pressure. But that's frustrating. Not what we wanted here. It, it, things were looking so good until I said, we're going to dominate today. Since then, we didn't score a touchdown and then have thrown an interception and allowed Daniel Jones to score on a rushing touchdown. I think zone coverage against the Giants is going to be the way today. I don't think man coverage, which we're doing on this play, I don't think man coverage is going to be a good decision for us. And that doesn't mean we're going to go exclusively zone, right? But I think a lot of zone. We're on to the end zone. Jason Carrington does not get to the football. He's 6'4". He's alligator arms. Paris Campbell, touchdown. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter who Paris Campbell has covering him, whether it's Jason Carrington, and the ball, I guess, just went right next to his arm. He, no, he brought his arm back. He brought his arm back. But yeah, beat A.J. Terrell earlier for first down. Uh, and now beats Jason Carrington for a touchdown, just on a streak. But how does Carrington not get a hand on this? He just doesn't really do anything. He waves side of the ball on the way by. Bring your arm down. Oh my god, that's frustrating. All right, 14-3. The Giants coming to play on primetime? I don't remember ever seeing this. All right, let's get the offense going. Bijan Robinson going to have to help out here. It's a good run. Oh my god, we have so much space. Dexter Lawrence is just too good. Yeah, this happened the last time we played the Giants. I forgot how amazing Dexter Lawrence is in this game. Now he's in the zone. He's just a really big problem to deal with. There's Madsen, and it's a freak acrobatic jump up to knock the football down. I mean, that works against any linebacker. 
here's the problem. It was a DB. Jackson in the slot. I mean, look at the play on the ball. It's a joke how good that play is. Because he's taking away Bijan here. Right? We can't throw it to Bijan Robinson, even though I wanted to. Quentin Drummond ends up coming open, but the ball is already out, right? So it's not really relevant. Neil Madsen's open. What a freak play. Tell me that's not Eddie Jackson. It is Eddie Jackson. <sighs> no, it's not. We're gonna punt. We're gonna punt. Oh, my God. All right. Maybe the last play of the first quarter. Play action. Get back here. Oh, going targeting Clark Phillips. Ball knocked up into the air and incomplete. That was a height mismatch. We might put Jason Carrington on Isaiah Hodgins. Clark Phillips maybe plays against Paris Campbell. That could be a way to do it. I think I'm going to organize my CB matchups based on height. Isaiah Hodgins just is big, and I really don't want Clark Phillips covering him. I just feel like that's a really bad matchup for us. Terrell is going to be on Paris Campbell right now. It's okay. It's a tight end screen. We read it. We're there. And Melvin is shut down. Big tackle by Deshaun Humphreys. Adds a TFL to his resume for today. Already with the sack, of course. Four tackles barely into the second quarter. He's on track for a crazy game in terms of production. He's also making an impact. That's a big tackle. Fourth and 12, Giants punt. We should be able to get close to midfield. Maybe just to the 40. Had higher hopes for that return. And Trey Lance will take the field. We got to figure it out on offense. We just have to. I love play action. It's a good place to start. Pitts open. Laser. Got it to him. What a catch by Pitts. See, I kind of hate that concept with the comeback route. Because it's two receivers that end up being in the same area. We need to use London in that spot as a clear out. And then that would leave Pitts wide open. And if London wins instantly down the field, that's just who we throw to. So, just, we gotta get that comeback off the field. But look at that juke from Bijan! The block! Bijan inside the five! What a run! Oh my goodness, it's the patience. The patience of Bijan to try and not do too much. Just create those one-on-one -on -one matchups in the open field. He makes one guy miss. And then it's just a foot race. I thought that was actually going to end up being a touchdown. Great blocks from Kyle Pitts, too, just getting in the way. But Deontay Banks comes back, saves a TD. Bijan takes him down to the one-yard line. And no Tyler Algier in the game. It's Bijan on the one with a chance to punch it in. Up the middle and in. Touchdown, Falcons. We are finally on the board of their first touchdown, I should say. Bijan Robinson in the stanky leg. Kyle Pitts as well, and he made that happen. Kyle Pitts with a number of huge blocks on that run. I think two, in fact, was the number. And we've made it a one-possession game. Giants got a little bit lucky. That's what I'm going to say. The Giants got a little bit lucky to start here. We are the better team. We're going to show it throughout the rest of this game. The Giants are driving already to our 30-yard line. I mean, it's just a tough team to stop right now. Daniel Jones trying to run. We basically spied him, and down he goes. Welcome back, Kyrie Yankee. Oh, boy, did we miss you. Missed the last four weeks with an injury, but he's coming back in a big way, bringing down Daniel Jones. Epic Katie going to get credit for half that as well. I think Stanley was the late arriver, so he probably doesn't get any credit. But you know what? He contained it. Daniel Jones definitely wasn't getting past Dylan Stanley. Here's a run. Barkley with a couple of missed tackles forced. But Stanley, as I mentioned, is going to be there to wrap it up. First tackle for Dylan Stanley. That's a big one. Third and 22. We're going to back up here. We're going to back up. And this is great coverage. John Graves even gets to Daniel Jones. The Grave Digger. Digging Daniel Jones' grave. Sacked again. And Daniel Jones might be dead by the end of this thing. I don't know what he's doing there exactly. Being stupid. Sounds about right. But 4th and 36, the Giants will punt back. Great stop from our defense. I mean, that's three TFLs in a row, right? A couple of sacks. We should have let that one go. A couple of sacks. Bill and Stanley, TFL on Barkley. But we have a long way to go now. Drake London on the clear out. That's what that streak is. Just get down the field. 
Somebody gets open. Madsen, nice catch. He dropped one earlier. That's a tougher catch to make, and he caught that one. Going gun empty. Oh, no. Fumble. Giants have it. Not picking up the blitzes today, huh? Did that in NCAA. And now I'm doing it in Madden. Leonard Williams right up the middle. I just... I didn't see it. I just didn't see it. What happened here? Oh, he went for the cut block and just missed. Well, I wasn't really accounting for that. It, I didn't even misdiagnose a blitz. We just went for a cut block. They rushed four, and they got pretty much instant pressure. Get to the outside. I over pursued it. I mean, they were going to score anyway, but that's not the way you want it to happen. Oh, man. 21-10, Giants. I don't know what's happening right now. That was obviously not good for me in, in man coverage against the tight end. But we couldn't have known he was just going to run to the flat. But we could have taken a better pursuit angle. But I, I didn't want to get beat to the pylon so badly that I looped it way too far and gave him the inside lane, which makes it even easier. All right. I mean, offense has been tough today. It's hard to run. We're going to keep trying to do it just away from Dexter Lawrence if we can. And we're going to be able to pass the ball effectively, but we need our offensive line to give us a moment, buy us a little bit of time. Play action pass. Pitts releases. So we gave him a shot, but it was underthrown because of pressure. Weren't really on the same page there. It doesn't matter. Pitts just boxes him out, makes the catch. We could use a little bit of luck, and that's a two-minute warning. I think we're trying to do a little bit too much. Historically, when we pass the ball well, it's quicker passes, it's working off a of play action, everything's in rhythm, and then we take the deep shots when it kind of when they present themselves. Right now, we're kind of trying to force the ball down the field. For what? Doesn't make any sense to do that. Neil Madsen open. That's where we win. It's the shallow crossers. It's running mesh. It's finding the right spot to go with the ball, not forcing it down the field. Bijan out wide. Maybe some eye candy there. We're going to go to Madsen again. Now, I don't want to risk Kyle Pitts getting out of the zone. But in a way, if they're going to leave Neil Madsen or somebody else open, Kyle Pitts can be a bit of eye candy. And being in the zone, obviously you want to exploit that in the zone ability, but it doesn't make him unstoppable. It doesn't mean he's going to break every tackle, catch every ball, win every ball in single coverage, even with the double me trait. But if he can be a really good distraction and get other people open because he's being doubled, that's a big win. That's a really big win. But we'll give him a chance here first down. What I'm saying, it's not a guaranteed anything. That's terrible, and now he's out of the zone. Second and 10. Madsen, we can't get it to him. 17 seconds left in the first half. It's third and 10. We just get it to Bijan. I mean, this pass rush is going crazy. Dexter Lawrence is actually off the field here. We'll see if they read the screen. Not really. Need to make one guy miss. Bijan, you're a monster. Thank you. Touchdown, Bijan Robinson. Number two of the game. This one on or through the air as opposed to the one on the ground earlier. The Giants defense is not making this easy. I thought they'd be Swiss cheese early, but they've been anything but. Still have scored, you know, three times, two touchdowns and a field goal, but they've been tough. We are certainly not doing what we want to them. That's for sure. 21-17, that's likely the score until the second half. Let's go. Here we go. Third quarter, offense gets it to start. Let's make something happen. We got some decent blocks. Quentin Drummond, get another one up the middle. There goes Drummond. No one will catch him. It's another kickoff return touchdown for Quentin Drummond. He is lightning in a bottle. That's why you need to get him the football. Drummond goes end zone to end zone. Monster kick return. That's how you take momentum in the second half. Run to the outside. Get there. Saquon actually going to get the first down. All right. Well, you know what? We're back in the driver's seat. Giants have the ball, like, they do control their own destiny here. Touchdown takes the lead. But we got the lead for right now. Maybe the Giants feel a little bit of pressure to make something happen. 
Bring him down. Oh, man. Over pursued. Force Barkley back inside. But a little bit too gung ho there trying to make something happen. Giants back on our own 30 or so. We got to sack him here. This is a pass. We got to get to him. Been running the ball a lot. Quick throw. Okuda right there, but pass is caught. Going to be third and one. Jones 11 for 14, 111 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And this is certainly looking like a pass. Not necessarily. Jeff Okuda, find it. Just having a really tough time stopping the Giants right now. Our second half game plan was stop the medium pass. Now they're just throwing it short. Getting the football out quickly. We don't really have an answer for it. Might shift our coverage underneath every play. I feel like we got to keep blitzing him, but let's press and play underneath and just force him to make a really good throw really quickly. Just can't figure it out right now. Now, throwing short passes is a really good way to combat the blitz. We are blitzing quite a bit right now. That might be the adjustment we make is, you know, only send three or four. We pinch our defensive line. Only send three or four. And force Daniel Jones to hold it and make something happen. Yankee in pursuit. Jones throw away. Third and goal. John Humphreys standing over the center. Jones looking to take off. Somebody get to him. Oh, it switched me on to the wrong guy. Daniel Jones with a rushing touchdown. Yep, I mean, that'll happen. I don't think anyone was going to get to him. I hit right stick to force somebody to run after Daniel Jones. Our coverage was good. At this moment, this is when Jeff Okuda's got to know he's got to pick up Daniel Jones. And he just doesn't react until way too long. I already hit right trigger, or right uh, stick, excuse me. And I thought it would shift me onto Jeff Okuda, but no. Gives me AJ Terrell, who is never going to make this play. He was already into the end zone. Oh, man. It's an extremely frustrating one. Giants retake the lead. Can Drummond make lightning strike twice? I'd like for it to happen. That looks like a face mask. Play action. Giants aren't really biting at anything. They're on the run, finding Kyle Pitts. Nice catch. If they keep dropping Aziz Ojolari into coverage, they're doing it wrong. Bijan wide open. Nice catch and run for Bijan Robinson. That's going to bring us close to the end of the third quarter. Might get one more snap off. It'll likely be a run to Bijan. I, again, love to go play action. I love play action. But we got to at least show them that we're willing to run the ball if play action is going to be successful. I mean, we're averaging 7.5 yards per carry, but a lot of that is from one big run. But still, 10 rushes, 75 yards, 3 catches for Bijan. He's over 100 total yards already. And I think there's a chance we can get him to 150. I'm not going to force it or anything. At least, I don't think so. We're going to do whatever is best for the offense. Bijan in a tough spot there. Third and seven. Just check it down to Bijan. Trust him. And Bijan makes somebody miss. Makes another miss. Bijan's still going. Bijan Robinson into the red zone in style. I think forced at least three missed tackles on that catch. And that's why I always feel comfortable checking down. Is I know that Bijan's capable of making... A number of players miss on any one play. Not just one. Not even just two, but three or four. He can do these kind of insane plays. Tyler Algier going to get in the game. And we could give him a shot, or we could pass off of it. I do actually like the look of a run here. Let's see how a draw does. I'm worried about Dexter Lawrence. I'm, I'm not... If people tell me to stop holding right trigger. I don't, and I'm not. He just sheds anyway. He's way too good. And I don't mean he's not worthy of playing as well. It's just like, it, he's really tough to play against. There's Trey Lance up the middle. Lawrence back in the zone. It's third and four. I don't really like what's happening. We get it to Bijan. What a throw from Lance. And it's dropped and Lance is injured. I'll tell you this. Maybe about 40 or 50% of you are getting what you finally wanted. The NFL debut of Jake Meeks. On fourth and four, our rookie quarterback at a Texas Tech is forced to take the field. Here's fourth down. Throwing over the middle, intercepted. No. Oh, my God. 
And we basically committed to throwing the slant there. We got the matchup we wanted. Did not go the way we wanted, though. I mean, it's just, it's a bad throw. It's a bad throw. It's out in front of Drake London. You can see him lunge to get it. And it's a torn labrum. No, it can't be. It can't be. And that is in my NCAA video I recorded and uploaded today. Injury for my quarterback and my starting running back. And now Trey Lance injured. Some of you are getting what you want. You want a rookie quarterback? You want to see what Jake Meeks can do? We're about to find out. It's a torn labrum. That's going to sideline Trey Lance for quite a while. This is week 12. We might see him back for the playoffs. We might not. Throwing deep. Clark Phillips gets a hand on it. Harris Campbell not doing that to the shorter Clark Phillips, although he did it to the six foot four Jason Carrington. It's a run. Dylan Stanley's all over it. Can't wrap up. Javon Holland saves him. Big tackle. Third and 11. Now, we can blitz here because we're forcing the Giants to throw the ball down the field. We might actually press out of it, though. Joe Blitz with Stanley. Jones taking a shot down the field. Clark Phillips there again. Good defense. Good defense. No pass interference. Giants will punt. We're still in it. Four and a half minutes to play. We need great field position here. Rashid Shaheed, help us out. Help us out. They're not going to give him a chance to return it. Football may be at the 15, 16-yard line. Jake Meeks, rookie quarterback at a Texas Tech. I mean, for the rest of the season, it's your team now. Again, a lot of people are going to be really happy about this. His first throw was an interception. It's only up from here. Wide open. There's Neil Madsen. He caught it. Got some yards after catch. Even took a big hit. But we don't need to only throw. Touchdown gives us the lead. Running outside has not been effective today. Now, when I used Jake Meeks in the preseason, I really hated his release. Did not like it. But I did like his running ability. And they're letting him go. There goes Jake Meeks. Blocks down the field. Just get out of bounds. We can't lose another quarterback today. Making play action. Maybe get Meeks on the run. Avon Thibodeau injured for the Giants. That'll work. Second and ten. Quick throw to Bijan. He makes Okereke miss. Gets seven yards. Third and three. I like Neil Madsen here. I like Quentin Drummond. One of those guys is going to get open. Drummond was open. Jake Meeks is such a short little bitch that... The throw hits the offensive line. He's 5'11". And on a, a big third and three, need to move the chains. And Madsen was open too. It hits Leonard Williams in the head, I think. Or maybe even our center, who's short too. I mean, we're building a short white team. See how well that does. Fourth and three. Wide open is Madsen. Didn't miss that one. Last play before the two minute warning gonna be a run Dexter Lawrence is ruining my life second and ten Bijan great route I, I can't I can't with this QB the timing is so different from Trey Lance try to make the throw easier we're gonna try a screen on third and ten I mean it's obvious four down territory here might not come to it big block Bijan got it first and goal from the four it's really tough to run, but I also think it's really tough to pass <laughs> with Jake Meeks. I don't know how we're going to do this. Slant, his delivery is so long. All right, Bijan. I, I mean, I need, I need Dexter Lawrence to get double teamed. Can I double team Dexter Lawrence somehow? Yeah, let's double team. Uh, left. No, that's it. Double team Dexter Lawrence. All right. Run the foot. He was not double teamed, by the way. I want my center to go double team him. Or even the left tackle to step up. Somebody's got to double team Dexter Lawrence. That's the way that we can kind of stop him a bit. Oh, they're begging for us to throw the ball. Let's get out to gun. Let's get out to gun. 
I called for a gun. I, I swear I, I, I wanted this out of gun. Let's get to it, please. Gun wing flex. Slant stick. There we go. False start. Oh, Jesus. Bad time for a false start. Should have just called a timeout. I thought about it too. I just didn't do it. Although I shouldn't have to think that a false start's coming. Third and goal from the seven. Throw on the run. Couldn't get it to Pitts. I was looking at Madsen for a while. Got back to Pitts. I didn't work out. Bijan on the one. There's a flag. Paul roughing the passer. Let's go. Roughing the passer. Leonard Williams gives us first and goal on the one. So I was looking at Pitts. I do not trust the release of Jake Meeks. I should have just... I zip it in there with Trey Lance. 100%. And then I'm seeing here pressure coming in. Just give Bijan a chance against a linebacker. Caught at the goal line. Would this have been a touchdown? I don't know. I think he's probably just short. Giants would have taken over at the one. We would have had three timeouts. Roughing the passer gives us a free set of downs. Did Jake Meek sell this? Did the rookie make a veteran move? Uh, yeah, that's roughing the passer. That's after the play. Come on now. I'm trying to injure him. First and goal. We're going to flip this. We bring Madsen in motion and snap it. Up the middle. Big block! Bijan! Touchdown! Number seven for seven. Oh, that's huge. We take the lead with a minute to play. Defense is going to have to step up. And the Giants have crushed us today. But the defense is going to need to step up. We do have full momentum. That's working to our advantage. That's a big drive. Away team players involved in touchdowns or takeaways enter the zone. Away team has an increased chance to block kicks. The block kicks one could matter. The other one is not going to matter. Like, at all. 45 seconds to play. Corner route, Phillips. Good defense. We know it's not a run. You cannot fool us. Step in front of it, Jesse Bates! No, you're too late! Oh my goodness, big play for the Giants. Just what they needed to stay in this thing. They might actually decide to run this. Play for the field goal, but they're looking to play for the win. Daniel Jones on the run, slides. Giants forced to call a timeout. 30 seconds to play from the 36. There's still no gimme on the field goal. See if they try to get a, bit, a little bit closer with Saquon Barkley. And they do. Saquon losing yardage. We're going to call a timeout for them. Is that stupid? Here's my thought process. If we get a stop on third and six because the Giants run the football, I want to have some time to answer, get in a field goal range. But they opt to pass. We could have done them the big favor. AJ Terrell down the field, intercepted! Game over. AJ Terrell ices it. All the Giants had to do was get three up on the board. Timeout called. I guess they thought they had a free one to work with. Daniel Jones takes a shot down the field. Not going to work this time. Should have just checked down to Saquon. Instead, they target our CB1. AJ Terrell on Wandale Robinson. And that's how the Giants lose in devastating fashion. We're going to kneel the ball down twice and get out of here with our win. This was... <laughs> this was a scary one. This was a scary one, but we come out on top, although not with everybody. Trey Lance might miss the remainder of this season. Game over, 31-28. Coach Dangus is hyped up. And how, how can I not be? How can I not be? Jake Meeks is going to be tough to win with. I think it's going to be bad. Gonna have to really lean on Bijan. Uh, it was a tough performance. Trey Lance played pretty well. Pressure forced that interception. Left some plays on the field. Bijan, 4.9 per carry, two touchdowns, 74 yards on the ground. It's a good game on 15 touches for sure, 15 carries. Helped us out as a receiver as well. Clark Melvin was tough to cover at times today. But for us, Bijan, 7 for 86 and a touchdown. 5 for 62 for Madsen, 4 for 83 for Pitts. No catches 
for Quinton Drummond, who is really starting to get hot, but a kick return touchdown. So I'm not mad about it. Sacks for Graves, Sean Humphreys, half a sack for Ebicady and Yankee. Welcome back to the lineup. And AJ Terrell with a game ceiling interception. This was quite the game. Quinton Drummond does have an upgrade. I think gotta upgrade his medium route running if I can. I find oftentimes we can do that with Playmaker. I'm gonna try Playmaker. It's a scheme fit anyway, makes him the primary scheme fit. Medium route running by two. That's exactly what I wanted. Spin move goes up by two, juke move, break tackle. So this was actually a pretty good set of upgrades for him. I'd like for juke move to get into the 90s. I don't know if that ever happens. Medium route running needs to be in the 80s. It's a 69 right now, which is nice, but not nice enough. Trey Lance gonna be out for the next five weeks. Could be worse. We'll get him back for the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, certainly not good. So Trey Lance out for the next four games, as I've simulated to the next week. Patriots, Rams, Bucks are the next three. And we'll have advanced scouting now on another player as well. Is it Matthew Callahan? It is. True round one talent, which is pretty good for an outside linebacker. You don't really see that very often. Does have A finesse moves. F injury. He's definitely really good, but is he worth it over Ezekiel Pleasant or somebody else for you to decide? Well, me later, but you in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take it easy.